Hey guys, Super Retro Kid here. So what I thought I'd make a video about today is uh, the PS2. Um, this is actually a PlayStation 2 Slim. And what I've got going on here is I have my PlayStation 2 Slim and um, this is a nice white uh, version of the PS2 Slim that's in like immaculate condition. Um, the only thing about it is even though it's in such great physical condition, I bought a brand new copy of Gears of War 2 and it still fails to read the disc. So like the disc will boot up and play, but then after you go for a while, it'll just like act up and your game will glitch out and this and that. So I started looking at, um, you know, what sort of alternatives are there? So if you have one of the bigger fat PS2s, they have an or they have an internal hard drive that you can buy like a cheap um, IDE to SATA, to SATA adapter off of like AliExpress to make the to you know put a more modern hard drive in it and load it up with games. But with the PS2, what you actually or with the PS2 Slim, what you actually have to do. Is you have to load the games over the uh, over the network, and I've tried doing that a few ways, and this is kind of the best way I found. So uh, I'm not going to walk you through, you know, the steps that I did to set this up, but there is a video that I'll link to in the description uh, that shows kind of step by step how to do this, and I'll also link to um, the uh, travel router that I'm using here. So the first thing to do is to either, you know, have a friend who has one or just go on eBay and buy what's called a free McBoot memory card and try to get whatever the newest version is. Um, because what this will do is like I put, so I put the free McBoot memory card in the memory two uh, slot and what it'll do is when you turn on the PS2, instead of booting to the PS2's regular operating system, it'll instead boot into Free McBoot, which gives you the option to run a uh, different piece of software. And the main piece of software that we're going to be using here is called uh, OPL, or Open PlayStation uh, Launcher. And what that's going to allow us to do is... What I have over here is a Netgear travel router. So this is like a little, or actually it's a TP-Link travel router. So what this is intended to be is just like a little $15 router for when you're traveling. So you can, you know, turn it into a NAS and share videos and music with the, the kids in the back seat or whatever. But what's cool about this one is you can turn it into a NAS that supports SMP or SMB one uh, protocol, which actually is a insecure protocol that you're not supposed to use anymore. So what's kind of cool is in the way that I've got this set up per the other video that I'll link, all you gotta do is use what's called, use a piece of software on your computer called OPL manager, and it'll create like the file structure and stuff for your thumb drive. And then you load your games up on it with, uh, cover with cover art and whatever and then you just have this travel router that you plug um uh you know gigabit ethernet cable on one end of it and then you use the gigabit ethernet jack on the back of the ps2 slim in order to create a, a network i mean this isn't actually touching my home network where like it's not connected to my Wi-Fi or anything, but what this is doing is right now when it's booting up, it's reading this thumb drive and it's launching that, or it's creating a mounted volume so that the, the free McBoot and open PS2 loader can then load ISO files from that file share on the travel router and transfer all this information through the network jack and I'm not sure if this is gigabit or or 100 megabits per second but either way it's fast enough 
to be at least as fast as the CD-ROM. So when you do it this way, you don't see any slowdown. I've tried a couple other ways. Um, one of the ways that people will commonly try is there are two, net, two USB 2.0 ports on the front of the PS2 Slim and those are too slow to where like a very few select games you won't experience slowdown but most games you'll experience a ton of slowdown and it's kind of a bad way to do it. Another way that I tried it was I tried just having a computer on my network share uh, you know do the do the NAS part of it and that seemed to be really slow or not not really slow it, the games would play fine until you got to an area with like more characters or something and then it would start to you'd start to experience slowdown another thing that I had tried is I had tried a Raspberry Pi I don't remember what version but I I tried using a Raspberry Pi where it was directly connected like this but then it was also sitting on my Wi-Fi network so that I could transfer ISOs of games to it over Wi-Fi and that seemed to have slowed down too. Now using this travel router I haven't played any game and experienced slowdown so I think this is the best way to do it. Now this other cable that I got coming out of here this is the HD Retrovision uh, component cable and that's actually running into what's called the RetroTINK 5X. So that's gonna be my upscaler unit down there. So when I play these games, they're actually gonna be upscaled to 1200 by whatever, which is a little higher than 1080p. So I'm gonna fire up the PS2. And I believe I already have the RetroTINK set to all the right settings. Okay, so now we're on component. Okay, so when you boot it up, this is what Free McBoot looks like. And this is the latest version, 1.95. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna look at, so we're at 1200p, we're at 16 by nine, interpolation soft, scan lines off, and we're on a motion adaptive deinterlacing. So what's really cool about that is that's supposed to be like the best version of deinterlacing for PS2, because PS2 has a lot of games that are at 480i. So then what we can do is go down here to open PS2 loader and this is actually going to use the network jack on the back of the PS2 Slim and connect into that uh, TP-Link travel router. And these are all the games then that are on that TP-Link travel router's USB uh, thumb drive that's plugged into it. So all of these games are being mounted on that TP-Link travel router. So then what's kind of cool, like let's fire up SSX. And I believe Open PS2 Loader also does like some kind of custom settings to make the games more compatible with it. There's our little snowflake for the loading screen. So now we're playing a game just as though it was in the CD-ROM drive, except we don't have to worry about disk read errors at all. So this is basically like, this is basically like a $20 optical drive emulator at this point. And I don't know how good the compatibility is, but so far every game I've tried works. And I don't think and I don't think there's any weird 
you know, I don't think there's anything weird to it, like where certain stuff doesn't work or anything. And as you can tell, it looks pretty good with that. I'm not sure if I'm getting 480p out of the game right now, or if it's 480i with the motion adaptive deinterlacing. But there's no slowdown or anything. It's pretty cool. I'm just not real familiar with playing this game on PS2. I always play this on GameCube. Oh. Yeah, and if you've never played SSX Tricky 3, this is like one of the best games. It might be the best snowboarding game. Yeah, so, so far there's been no slowdown at all. And I'm pretty sure that's the product of the, the network port being faster than, at least as fast as the CD-ROM drive ever was. But this is kind of cool because uh, it's pretty easy to rip PS2 games. So you can take your collection and use any old CD burner to rip it, to rip the game. And then you can just use the ISO with open PS2 loader. And you don't have to worry about trying to keep your aging laser alive on your PlayStation 2. I think a lot of people prefer just using a PlayStation 2 fat instead of using a slim with this method. But I think the Slim looks a lot cooler. And the PlayStation 2 is actually super loud. Like the fat one. It has this fan that's like insanely loud. So I just really like being able to do this with a Slim. And using these HD retrovision cables with the with the RetroTink 5X gives you a great picture. Yeah, so that's uh that's using open PS2 loader with a PlayStation 2 Slim and free McBoot. So if you want to do this, all you need is a PS2 Slim, you know, a memory card loaded with free McBoot, which is like $5 off eBay. And then one of these little TP-Link travel routers with a thumb drive. Uh, that thumb drive I have is nothing special. It's 64 gig uh, thumb drive and you just load everything up and you're good to go so i'll make sure to put links in the description this is super retrocade thanks for watching and i hope you enjoyed